There's an ancient lava field in Australia that was home to massive, widespread volcanic eruptions. These eruptions were so extensive that they covered a huge swath of land that stretches from the east of Western Australia all the way into the Northern Territory. Thousands of volcanic eruptions occurred which spewed an unbelievable amount of lava out, transforming the land forever. A large igneous province, also known as an LIP, is a vast region of the Earth's crust that has been formed by the extensive and rapid eruption of large volumes of volcanic rock, typically over a geologically short period. These provinces are characterised by their massive scale, often covering areas greater than 100,000 square kilometres, and can include features such as continental flood basalts, volcanic plateaus, layered mafic and ultramafic intrusions, and extensive sill and dike complexes. LIPs are typically the result of mantle plume activity, where abnormally hot mantle material rises towards the surface, causing extensive melting and magmatism. The formation of LIPs is often associated with significant geological events, such as continental breakups, and they can have profound impacts on the environment, climate and biosphere, sometimes being linked to mass extinction events. Additionally, LIPs are of considerable economic interest, due to the rich mineral deposits they often host, including important sources of metals like nickel, copper and platinum group elements. In this video, we're going to take a look at a large igneous province that stretches across the land of Western Australia, deep into the Northern Territory. The Warracoona Large Igneous Province was formed during the Mesoproterozoic Era, approximately 1.07 billion years ago. This LIP is one of the most significant geological features in Australia, covering vast expanses of the continent. The Warracoona LIP holds considerable economic significance due to the rich mineral deposits it hosts. This volcanic activity spanned an east to west belt roughly 800 km wide and 2,400 km long, covering an area of 1.5 million square kilometres across western and central Australia. The province features a variety of rock types, including layered mafic and ultramafic intrusions, dikes, and a 1,000 km long mafic sill. The vast geographical extent of these rocks and the brief period of magmatism suggest that they were emplaced above a mantle plume head, centred in central Australia. Despite the wide geographical spread, the mafic rocks exhibit similar mid-ocean ridge trace element patterns and rare earth element characteristics. The Mesoproterozoic era was a period characterised by significant tectonic and magmatic activity. This era was marked by the assembly and eventual breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia. The Warracoona Large Igneous Province formed during the assembly of the supercontinent. It's associated with tectonic processes that were part of the convergence and collision events leading up to the assembly of Rodinia. The extensive magmatism of the Warracoona LIP is thought to have been driven by mantle plume activity during this period of supercontinent formation, which contributed to the magmatic and tectonic evolution of the region. This rapid emplacement of magma was facilitated by a localised upwelling of abnormally hot rock within the Earth's mantle. As the plume rose towards the Earth's surface, it caused extensive melting of the mantle, leading to the generation of large volumes of mafic and ultramafic magma. Mafic magma is rich in magnesium and iron and typically produces dark coloured rocks like basalt and gabbro. Ultramafic magma contains even higher concentrations of magnesium and iron, and it's much rarer, leading to the formation of rocks such as peridotite and dunite, which are even denser and darker than mafic rocks. This magma intruded into the overlying crust, creating a vast network of seals, dikes and layered intrusions. This contrasts with some other LIPs that are associated with the breakup of supercontinents, where rifting and continental separation are the dominant processes. The Warracoona LIP formed over a relatively short geological time frame, with most of its magmatic activity occurring around 1.07 billion years ago. Imagine the Warracoona region of ancient Australia during the peak of the large igneous province eruptions. The landscape would have been dominated by a series of dramatic and violent volcanic events, fueled by the intense heat and pressure of a mantle plume rising from deep within the earth. This plume would have caused the crust to bulge and crack, creating fractures and rifts that served as conduits for the massive outpouring of magma. As the eruptions began, vast volumes of basaltic lava would have surged to the surface through fissures that stretched for hundreds of kilometres. The lava would have flowed across the land in enormous glowing rivers, covering the terrain with thick layers of molten rock. These flows might have extended for tens or even hundreds of kilometres, forming expansive lava fields that would eventually cool and solidify into the thick, dark basalt plateaus characteristic of flood basalts. 
To clarify, flood basalts are extensive, thick layers of basaltic lava that flow over vast areas during massive, prolonged volcanic eruptions, often covering thousands of square kilometres. The lava flows that erupted across the terrain were awe-inspiring in their scale. Rivers of molten basalt poured out of the earth, spreading relentlessly across the land. These flows would often reach several metres in thickness, and in places where the eruptions persisted, layer upon layer of lava built up over time. In some regions, the accumulated lava could have formed blankets of solid rock hundreds of metres thick, covering the ancient landscape in a mantle of basalt. In addition to the surface flows, the intense pressure from below would have forced magma into the surrounding rocks, creating extensive networks of sills and dikes. Sills and dikes are sheet-like intrusions of magma that solidify within existing rock layers, with sills running parallel to the layers and dikes cutting across them vertically or steeply. Some of these dikes would have erupted in a manner that sent fountains of lava, ash and gas high into the sky, while others would have quietly intruded into the crust, cooling slowly to form the vast, layered mafic and ultramafic intrusions that we see in the geological record today. The sills in the Warakuna LIP spread horizontally through the crust, sometimes stretching for hundreds of kilometres in length across the Earth's surface. These impressive sheet-like formations could reach thicknesses of up to 340 metres, forming extensive near-horizontal layers of igneous rock that intruded between older rock layers at relatively shallow depths beneath the surface. The sky above this fiery landscape would have been hazy due to the volcanic gases and ash, but the atmosphere would have primarily been thick with water vapour and carbon dioxide emitted by these eruptions. The ground would have trembled with the constant rumble of volcanic activity, as massive basaltic lava flows spread across the land, altering the landscape over time. As these eruptions continued, the immense volumes of lava and volcanic material would have reshaped the landscape, burying ancient terrains under thick layers of igneous rock. Over time, as the mantle plume's influence waned, the eruptions would have subsided, leaving behind a transformed landscape. A vast, barren volcanic plain dotted with the remnants of ancient lava flows, sills and dikes. This desolate scene would have gradually cooled and solidified, setting the stage for the geological processes that would shape the region over the next billion years. The geological record of the Warakuna LIP is preserved in various regions across Australia, particularly in the western and central parts of the continent. The Musgrave Province, located in Central Australia, is one of the key areas where the effects of the Warakuna LIP are most prominently observed. Here, the magmatic activity associated with the LIP led to the formation of extensive seal complexes, mafic dikes and the famous Giles intrusions, which are some of the largest and most well-preserved examples of mafic and ultramafic intrusions in the world. The Warakuna LIP is a classic example of continental large igneous provinces, as it formed on land rather than beneath the ocean. The magmatic activity associated with the LIP was largely confined in the continental crust of what is now Australia. It is one of the largest and most extensive LIPs in Australia. This immense geographical spread shows just how profound the scale of the magmatic event that created the LIP was. The Warakuna LIP spans several geological provinces, each characterised by distinct geological features. In the west, the LIP is associated with the Paleoproterozoic Irahidi Basin, and the Mesoproterozoic Edmund and Collier Basins. These regions are dominated by extensive sealed complexes and mafic dikes, which intruded into sedimentary rocks during the peak of magmatic activity. Further to the east, in the Musgrave Province, the Warakuna LIP is marked by the presence of the Giles intrusions, large sheet-like mafic and ultramafic bodies that extend for hundreds of kilometres. These intrusions represent some of the most significant geological features of the Warakuna LIP, one of the most remarkable aspects of the Warakuna LIP is its association with significant mineral deposits. The magmatic activity that formed the LIP also created the conditions necessary for the concentration of valuable metals, making the Warakuna LIP an area of considerable economic interest. The Giles intrusions in the Musgrave province are particularly noteworthy for their mineral potential. These intrusions are composed of mafic and ultramafic rocks which are known to host significant deposits of nickel, copper and platinum group elements. These metals are typically concentrated in magmatic sulphide deposits, which form when sulphide minerals separate from the magma and collect in certain parts of the intrusion. The Nebo Babel deposit, located within the Warakuna LIP in the Musgrave province, is one of the most significant discoveries in the region. This deposit contains substantial reserves of nickel, copper and platinum group elements, making it one of the largest and most economically important mineral deposits in Australia. 
The discovery of the Nebel Babel deposit has spurred further exploration in the region, and a potential for additional significant finds. In addition to nickel, copper and platinum group elements, the Warakuna LIP is also associated with other types of mineralization. For example, the emplacement of mafic and ultramafic magmas can lead to the formation of iron, titanium and vanadium. Like before, these deposits are also typically found in layered intrusions, where the minerals have concentrated within specific layers within the intrusion. In conclusion, the Warakuna Large Igneous Province represents a remarkable chapter in Australia's history, where massive volcanic eruptions reshape the landscape. The sheer scale of these eruptions and the vast network of lava flows, sills and dikes they left behind speak to just how pronounced this volcanic event was. While the land has since settled into the quieter rhythms of geologic time, the evidence of this dramatic event remains etched in the rocks, a reminder of a period of when ancient Australia seemed alive with fire and molten rock. The Warakuna LIP not only transformed the landscape, but also laid down mineral riches that have become part of Australia's geological heritage. So whilst this story was one of intense volcanic activity, it's also one of pronounced mineral enrichment, which only served to further deposit even more riches in the beautiful landscape of Australia. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.